Good evening. A um, couple of passages I want to share with you tonight um, that I kind of spent a little time thinking about this afternoon. Um, I, I tell you guys all the time that so often what I end up deciding to talk about when I get up here is uh, the things that I need to hear. So I get up here and talk to myself and let you guys listen in a little bit. Um, and, and I think this is one of those cases where this, this is where this one comes from. Um, as I think about um, these passages tonight, these are some that, um, that I kind of need to hear right now. And the reason I think that uh, these are um, that these are appropriate for me to think about right now is because of how busy I am right now. Uh, you know, coming into the end of the school year and coaching things at school and there's projects at the house that need done that aren't getting done and there's um, end of the year things at school to wrap up in the classroom that um, I did not get as much math taught in our new math curriculum this year as I wanted to get to and and feeling like I've, I've got to try to rush to get some things done there and, and at least expose the kids to some things. And, and uh, we've got softball practice after school every night. And, and it's just, I, I feel really busy right now. And all those things that I'm doing are things that I enjoy and things that I see value in. Um, but then they take up a lot of time. And there's other things that I also see a lot of value in that, that maybe I'm feeling like I'm neglecting a little bit or or um, when I do have time to, do, to work on some of those things, I just don't want to because I'm kind of worn out and I'm kind of busy doing a lot of other stuff. And, and so, um, so I've been struggling a little bit with motivation and, and uh, you know, getting some things done that need to be done when I have a little bit of free time to work on those things. So that's where these come from and, and uh, maybe there'll be some things that can help you as, as uh, I can't be the only person that this applies to. If I am, then you guys got to teach me how to manage time better uh, if you're doing it better than I am. Um, but here's, here's a few passages for us to think about and some thoughts to go along with them. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, verily do it with your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge in, or wisdom in Sheol where you're going. We have a limited amount of time, right? We have this life. And once we get to the end of this life, then those things that we leave undone in this life are going to be left undone. We're not going to get to those things. And so, um, so Solomon here is, is passing on this wisdom to us. You know, whatever your, finds to, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Do it. Do it to the best of your ability. Fulfill your obligations. Do the things that you need to get done. And, and do them well now because a lot of these things, we won't get a second opportunity to do them. We won't get a, a second chance to come, come back around and, and try to, to make them better a second time. Uh, because this time is all that we have left uh, to get those things done in. So, um, you know, I want to be sure that I'm not wasting time, that I'm not, um, that I'm not, leaving undone the things that need to be done that are important to do. And there's some other passages that kind of go along with this thought. Colossians chapter 3. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians chapter 3. Um, in the last part of chapter 3, uh, Paul there is, is writing to some specific people or groups of people. He talks to wives in verse 18, husbands in verse 19, children in verse 20, fathers in verse 21. And then in verses 22 and following, he talks to slaves. And that's the part that applies to us. Uh, we are workers in God's kingdom. And so as we think about, um, you know, kind of the, the verses that precede that, there's some targeted verses that may not, you know, the part about, Wives, it's good for me to know that verse, but I'm not a wife. And, and the husband part, that doesn't apply to some of you all. So, um, but, but once it gets down to verse 22 and it says slaves, well, that's all of us. This is, this is something that we can all find application in uh, because we are all servants in God's kingdom and we all work uh, for others and, and we, have, we have things that need to be done. So in verse 22 it says, Slaves, in all things obey those who are, uh, who are your masters on earth 
not with external service as those who merely please men, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the, wor- as for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. For he who does wrong will receive the consequences of the wrong which he has done, and that without partiality. So a couple of thoughts here uh, kind of strike me. First of all, um, he says to do those things with sincerity of heart. And I don't know about you, but there, there are times when I'm going through the motions. I know there's something that I need to do that I need to, I have an obligation to fulfill. And I'm kind of in that I don't want to mode, right? I, I, I know I have to do it, but I, I really would rather be doing something else. And so I do it, but my mind is elsewhere, my heart is elsewhere. And, you know, I, I can check it off the list because I've done what I was contractually obligated to do. But then did I really do it to the best of my ability? And it kind of goes back to what Solomon said, you know, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. And here Paul says it. In the next verse, he says, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than as for men. And so when we find those things that whether it be a a work obligation or a school obligation or a, a, a friendship obligation or whatever it is, treat it like it's a kingdom obligation. Because in all things that we do, we represent our king, even when we're out working in other places, even when we're out interacting with with people on a a social or a business level, um, we still represent our king. And so we should do it as though we are putting his name on it, not just our name. And so that's the the point that Paul is trying to get across here and doing those things sincerely with your heart, doing them for the Lord, not just doing them to please men, not just to check them off the list, not just to, to fulfill that obligation, but do them as though you're actually presenting that service to Christ. Because in, in reality, we really are. Um, we're putting his name on the things that we do because we wear his name wherever we go. Um, and so uh, that's a good reminder for me as I uh, find myself sometimes uh, wishing that I could be somewhere else or do something else uh, rather than the obligation that I have in that moment. I need to make sure that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm treating that as though it is an obligation to Christ. Um, now, another passage I like to look at here for this is uh, Galatians chapter 6. Um, Galatians. Um, We'll start in verse 6, Galatians 6, 6 and following, it says, And let the one who is taught the word share all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh shall from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit shall from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we shall reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all men, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So kind of working our way backwards through that passage, I think what he says there at the end really fits in with what Solomon said, and it fits in with what Paul wrote in Colossians when he says, you know, while we have opportunity, this life is all that we have. Uh, Whatever our hand finds to do, do it it with our might. So as we have the opportunity, let's do the, the good that is presented to us on a daily basis that we have the opportunity to do. And then back, working back from there, not losing heart in doing good. And, and I, that I think is, is where that busyness, at least for me, comes in, that I get uh, so, so busy and so um, distracted by the fact that I have a lot to do that I can lose track of the fact uh, or lose track of the thing I'm working on in the moment because my mind is elsewhere thinking about all the other things that I should be doing. And so, or, or that I would rather be doing maybe is a better way of putting that sometimes. And so um, losing heart and doing good is not, not being in the moment, not thinking about that really good thing that we're doing, uh, that we are doing or should be doing with our might, that we should be doing uh, to put uh, the Lord's name on, uh, but rather our mind is elsewhere and we're thinking about something else and, and we're, we're just getting tired. We're getting, uh, we're getting tired of the things that, that we're called to do. And so 
uh, let's not do that. Let's, let's not get lost in the shuffle and lost in the busyness of things that are going on around us, but let's be in the moment and focus on the good that we're doing in that moment. And then st- taking a step back from there, verse 8, and this one we often think about in terms of giving or you know, giving of our, our monetary resources, but I think it, it, it fits with our, our time and our uh, other physical resources as well. The one who sows to his own flesh shall from the flesh reap corruption. The one who sows to the Spirit shall from the Spirit reap eternal life. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. If we're not putting our hearts into it, then why do we expect God to count it to us as faithfulness? Why do we expect to receive uh, credit for it as being obedience or being done in the name of the Lord if we're not going to put our hearts into it? And so we need to put um, everything that we have into it because God didn't hold back from us. He didn't go through the motions when he created the world, when he created us, when he uh, sent his son to die for us. He didn't ever just kind of, you know, just not put his all into it. He always put his all into everything that he gave us, and he expects us to put our all into it as well. So uh, whatever we find to do, do it with our might, because if we are giving anything less, then we are shortchanging God, and and we are uh, basically saying that he is not worthy of the best that we have to offer. And so um, a a final passage that I'll share with you, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16 1 Corinthians 16 and, um, there we go, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 14. It's a, it's a simple verse. Let all that you do be done in love. First of all, I like that one because it fits with our theme for the year. Um, but second of all, it kind of refocuses things. If I find myself doing the things that I'm doing because it's on my checklist or because I have an obligation to do those things or because... Uh, if I don't do them, then people are going to be mad at me. Or if I, uh, you, you know, it's, it's the bare minimum of what I need to get done to, to fulfill whatever obligation I'm looking at, then that's never the right motivation. That's never the right reason to be doing those things. I need to be focused on love and let love be my motivation for doing the things that I'm doing. And uh, if we can do those things in love, then that's going to affect the way that we do those things. It's going to affect our attitude about the, way, the things that we're doing. And it's going to affect the outcome. Um, Paul, you know, in 1 Corinthians 13, when he talked about, um, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, it's like a sounding gong and clanging cymbal. Um, You can say the same words and say it one way in love, and it doesn't mean as much as if you say the same words, but love is behind them. You can do the same action. And doing that action one time out of obligation and out of just a sense of duty, uh, it might get the job done, but it doesn't mean the same thing as if you do that exact same job and you do it in love. It doesn't mean as much to you as you do it, and it doesn't mean as much to the one who receives it. And so our love needs to be our motivation, our guide for doing uh, the things that we're called to do. And so those are some things I'm going to be focused on just myself as I kind of wrap up the school year and get started on what I'm sure is going to be a busy summer. Uh, well, sometimes I'm lazy in the summer, but um, I, there's lots to do. And as I think about all those things that I do need to do and I get overwhelmed sometimes and I, and I start thinking about um, just that list of obligations or whatever, I'm going to try to think about these verses and think about uh, making sure that I'm doing them for the right reasons and in the right way. And I invite you to think about those uh, verses as well and try to let's try to refocus and recenter our hearts uh, so that we can be doing all the right things, but we can be doing all those right things in the right way and for the right reason. Um, If you have any need this evening, we want to make sure that we extend the Lord's invitation. That's always open. uh, But any time that we're gathered in this way, we want to make sure that we extend that invitation publicly. So if anyone needs to respond in a public way, they have the opportunity to do so. Uh, So if you have any need this evening, would you come while we stand and sing?